Bethlehem United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Corey Alexander Willette, and it is my joy to be the pastor here at St. B. Before we get started this morning, we have a few announcements. First is that our UMW Day Circle will meet this Thursday, February 15th at 10.30 a.m. over in Heritage Hall. Also, Anne's Closet is still in need of a few items if you are able to donate them so that we can continue to help our neighbors in need. Our Wednesday night Bible study will continue to be held via Zoom until Lent begins. Lent starts on March 2nd, and we will be having an Ash Wednesday service here in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. And finally, next Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, our open table church council will be meeting in the latecomers classroom. If you are not on church council but are interested in knowing what is going on and being part of the discussion as we continue to lead the church, you are invited. It is an open meeting to all. Now, whether this is your first time here or you have been attending for years, whether you are joining us on person or joining us online, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions. 
no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Poor or despairing, come to be blessed. Sorrowing or sighing, come to discover joy. Share your hopes, your dreams. Come as you are. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together our opening hymn, How Firm a Foundation, hymn number 529. together through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. No, you may not be seated. We sit the glory of God right now. <laughs> Now you may be seated. 
Let us pray. Shepherd of our souls, guide us through times of woe, and help us find your solace and peace. Forgive us in times of sin and sorrow, and lead us into your redeeming love. Resurrect us in times of death and despair, and lead into new life, that we may be the blessing we seek for each and every one we meet. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing together, I want a principle within, hymn number 410. <laughs>
Over the last several weeks, we have been hearing Jesus explain that he has come to turn the world on its head. He has come to overturn injustice, promote fullness of life in God, and change the way we view the world and our lives. We have been called to leave everything behind and follow Christ, inviting others along this journey with us. This morning, we hear the Sermon on the Plain. Jesus and the disciples have descended from a time of prayer on the mountain, and they are surrounded by people wanting to experience the power of Christ and experiencing it just by reaching out and touching him. We then move into the Sermon on the Plain, which parallels much of Matthew's Sermon on the Mount, though Luke's account is abbreviated and much more challenging. We first hear these four blessings before moving into these woes, which are much more challenging to hear. We hear this declaration of God's favor on the poor. And we hear the continued fulfillment of the words Jesus preached that day in the synagogue after reading from Isaiah. We hear that Mary did indeed know the heart of her baby boy as she sang the Magnificat, saying, He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. These blessings in Luke definitely give us a different feeling than the ones we find in Matthew. The small but impactful differences in Matthew almost feel like they aim to lessen the blow that Jesus is dealing. Matthew softens the language by saying things like, Blessed are the poor in spirit. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. These are much easier for us to relate to, and they make us more comfortable because in those we can see ourselves. Whereas with Luke, I find myself feeling like I fall more in line with the woes. Luke's blessings challenge our assumptions we have about the poor among us. We have been conditioned to assume that something is wrong with them. They're just lazy and unmotivated. They just need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps. They are morally inept because they do not have enough. And absolutely woe on us for believing those lies and misconceptions. Woe on us for being willing to view them, being unwilling to view them as created in God's own image. Woe on us for being unwilling to look beyond the decisions they have made so that they can survive. Challenging, destroying these assumptions is also liberating for us who have not faced poverty. Because we are free to empty ourselves of misconceptions, be filled to the brim with the Holy Spirit, love God's people more fully and deeply, and truly see them as beloved children of God. And we know that this repentance is indeed possible. We see evidence of this in the story of Zacchaeus. As Jesus sees him and says, I am coming to your home tonight. 
he shares a meal with Christ and begins righting the wrongs he has committed against others. But this repentance is more than just generous giving. It means divesting oneself of wealth that encumbers a genuine dependence on God and making restitution for unjust profits. Reverend Nadia Bowles-Weber is a Lutheran pastor, activist, and author. She wrote a Beatitude Blessing, and in it she says, Maybe Jesus was simply blessing the ones around him that day who didn't otherwise receive a blessing, who had come to believe that, for them, blessings would never be in the cards. I mean, come on. Doesn't that sound just like something Jesus would do? Extravagantly throwing around blessings as though they grew on trees. She goes on to say that Jesus is God's beatitude. God's blessing to the weak in the world, that to the weak in a world that admires only the strong. These blessings are important because they show us the radical ways of discipleship that turn the way of the world upside down. They bless those who might not be blessed. They pour God's favor upon those we don't assume have God's favor at all. They challenge us to look more deeply at ourselves and our preconceived notions about one another. This morning we're closing with the hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. Because this blessing is also deeply ingrained in the bonds we have with one another. This blessing is poured out when we are willing to reach beyond these ideas we have formed and enter into more authentic and loving relationships with one another. And so may we be willing to let go of all that is holding us back from experiencing the kingdom of God in the here and now. This morning, I want to close with the Beatitudes that Reverend Nadia Bolsweber writes. Blessed are the agnostics. Blessed are they who doubt, those who aren't sure, who can still be surprised. Blessed are they who are spiritually impoverished and therefore not so certain about everything that they no longer take in new information. Blessed are those who have nothing to offer. Blessed are the preschoolers who cut in line at communion. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You are of heaven and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are they for whom death is not an abstraction. Blessed are they who have buried their loved ones, for whom tears could fill an ocean. Blessed are they who have loved enough to know what loss feels like. Blessed are the mothers of the miscarried. Blessed are they who don't have the luxury of taking things for granted anymore. Blessed are they who can't fall apart because they have to keep it together for everyone else. Blessed are those who still aren't over it yet. Blessed are those who mourn. You are of heaven, and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are those who no one else notices. The kids who sit alone at middle school lunch tables the laundry guys at the hospitals, the sex workers and the night shift street sweepers. 
Blessed are the forgotten. Blessed are the closeted. Blessed are the unemployed, the unimpressive, the underrepresented. Blessed are the teens who have to figure out ways to hide the new cuts on their arms. Blessed are the meek. You are of heaven, and Jesus blesses you. Blessed are the wrongly accused, the ones who never catch a break, the ones for whom life is hard. For Jesus chose to surround himself with people like them. Blessed are those without documentation. Blessed are those without lobbyists. Blessed are foster kids and special ed kids and every other kid who just wants to feel safe and loved. Blessed are those who make terrible business decisions for the sake of people. Blessed are the burned out social workers and the overworked teachers and the pro bono case takers. Blessed are the kind hearted football players and the fundraising trophy wives. Blessed are the kids who step between the bullies and the weak. Blessed are they who hear that they are forgiven. Blessed is everyone who has ever forgiven me when I didn't deserve it. Blessed are the merciful, for they totally get it. May we continue to open ourselves to the world-flipping, justice-filled work that Christ invites us to be a part of. And may God bless you. In the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer. Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offer. Our time of prayer this morning, our full 
list of prayer of prayer requests can be found on the back of our bulletin. We also want to lift up Kitty C this morning. She fell last Sunday and dislocated her hip and has been in the hospital this week. On Thursday at morning, she had a hip replacement. She is still in the hospital and recovering well, but we want to continue to lift her up in prayer. Are there other joys or concerns you would like to name together? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, God who has poured blessings upon us, God who calls us to be part of the never-ending work of the kingdom of God, We come to you this morning, hearts full of prayer, hearts full of joy, hearts full of an abundance of things. We lift up to you all of our prayers, prayers for our world that it might know your peace, prayers for our nation, that we might knock down the barriers that separate us, prayers for our community as we see so many ever-present needs, and prayers for each one of us, for the things we struggle with either in community or alone, for the grief we bear, for the joy and the celebration we experience. Oh God, you have searched our hearts and you know us inside and out. You have poured your Holy Spirit upon us and empowered us to be your hands and feet in the world. Oh God, be with us, especially when we fall short of what you have called us to when we have looked the other way, when we have prioritized our own comfort over the needs of our neighbors. And yet, even in the midst of all that we do wrong, of the times when we miss the mark, you have called us good. You have created us in your own image and called us to love you. And now, it is as your beloved children, we pray together the prayer that Jesus first taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together our closing hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, hymn number 557.
Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sustainer.